is telling us the directionality of the relationship. So what it's saying is that there's a negative association between the independent and the dependent variable. In other words, as the independent grows larger, as the independent observations grow larger, the dependent observations grow smaller. That's what a negative association means. Okay? So, there you go, guys. That's the correlation calculation done here for this particular case here. Now, I just want to do the other cases just to show you that they are actually the same, okay? And actually, the other cases are, are actually are a lot easier or maybe a lot quicker to actually do from a calculation perspective. So, I want to show you the other cases here. So, I'm actually just going to do this one here first of all, okay? So, I'm just going to continue on out, okay? You can see actually to use this formula here required that we calculate the mean it required that we calculate the mean of the independent and the mean of the dependent variable. It also call, call, uh, required us to calculate the distance between uh, the independent observations and their mean, the distance between the dependent observations and their mean, and also the cross products. Okay, so there was a couple of calculations to do there. Okay, and um, with this particular formula here, you can see actually the only thing that we require that we haven't got already, okay, is our x, y is. So we need our x times our y values. Okay, that's the only thing that's missing here. Okay. So what we have is our x times our y's. This is 2 times 8 gives us 16. This is 4 times 5 gives us 20. This is 3 times 4 gives us 12. This is 5 times 2 gives us 10. And this is 6 times 1 gives us 6. So here we have uh, to calculate this particular, use this particular formula, all we need is the, is the sum of the x column. We have it there. We need a sum of the y column, we have it here. And finally, we need a sum of the x, y column, which is this column here. So actually, effectively, we don't need these three particular columns in the middle here. So we've actually, we'd actually have reduced our calculations significantly, okay? So what we got here, uh, let's just have a look at the, so this gives us 10, 30, 40, 50, okay? Uh, 56, 58, this gives us 60, 64 here. That's the sum of the x, y is. So in this particular form here, we have our covariance, our covariance of x, y, okay, is equal to n times the sum of the x, y's. Well, n is 5, so it's it's 5 times the sum of the x, y's. The sum of the x, y's is 64, minus the sum of the x's, which is 20, times the sum of the y's, which is 20, okay, all divided by n, which is 5, times n minus 1, which is which is, which is is 4. So in this case here, we end up with a covariance, covariance of xy, okay, is equal to, well, let's do it. Let's do, the, let's do the numerator first. So it's 5 times 64. I don't know whether you can see that there. Maybe I'll move that up here. Can you see that there now? Yeah, maybe. Maybe if I move it over here, it's a little bit better. So it's 5 times 64 gives us 320 minus 20 times 20 is 400. So minus 400 gives us a value of minus 80. So that's minus 80 divided by 20, which once again is minus 4. So you can actually see that they agree, that this agrees with this particular calculation here. But this is a lot quicker. It's a lot quicker, okay? And then finally what we have is we could do it the other way, which is using this formula here, which says it's n times, so it's the covariance of x, y is n, which is 5, okay, times the average of the x, y column. Well, the average of the x, y column is 64 over 5, okay? So it's times 64 over 5, and minus the average of the x's, which is 4, times the average of the y. So it's 4 times 4. Uh, all over n minus 1, which is all over 4. So in this case here, we end up with the covariance of x, y is equal to, well, 5 times, 5 times five, uh, the 64 over 5 is going to cancel. This is just 64. So this becomes 64 minus 16. So what we have on the top in the numerator form here is, don't forget, that's 4 times 4 is 16. So it's a negative 16. So we end up with 64 minus 16 gives us a value of 48. Okay? And we have 48 divided by 4. Is that right? Am I right in what I'm doing here? Okay, let's see what we have. We have oh, the sum of the x, y is, so the average of the x, y is, uh, that's 64 over 5. That's great. Okay, oh, 
it's n times, sorry, it's n times all of this here, okay? So it's 5 times, that gives us 64, okay? And then it's 5 times the 16, so it's 64 minus 5 times our 16, gives us a value of minus, that's minus 16 over 4, which is minus 4, which once again agrees, disagrees with what we have calculated earlier on, okay? Uh, actually, to be honest with you, we would never really use this calculation here when we're doing it by hand because that requires all of this particular work here okay we wouldn't do that whereas what we would do is we would use this formula here okay because we can actually eliminate this middle bit and all we need is these two columns and this xy column here okay guys uh, this is uh, showed you a quick way to calculate the covariance and don't forget the covariance really only tells us the directionality the directionality of the the directionality of the association between our x's and our y's uh, it doesn't really tell us the magnitude and actually to calculate uh, to a uh, normalized magnitude we would actually calculate the correlation coefficient okay guys once again this is jonathan lambert with the mathematics development and support service at the national college of ireland i hope that these videos were intuitive and more importantly i hope that it was helpful for you and thanks for watching okay bye bye